Okay, La Sierra University students, welcome to your first day of CJUST 444, White Collar Crime, and CJUST 466, e-discovery, also known as computer hacking or digital forensics. Uh, I'm not good at this. This is going to be a little bit uh, of a test for all of us. Uh, I've never done a online class before. Uh, as some of you know, uh, some of you guys have taken my classes before. Uh, I am very low technology. So we're going to give this a shot. Uh, we're going to make sure that uh, you all understand the, the material. Uh, we're going to be changing some formatting, of course, because the way I teach uh, in person is going to be a little difficult to do uh, in an online format. Uh, this introduction is going to be for both of my classes, uh, 444 and 466, uh, just to save a little bit of time. Uh, so what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to make sure we get our emails out to all my students. Uh, I'm going to attach uh, the materials, uh, also uh, kind of what the expectations are. And we'll have one uh, short assignment uh, for today. Uh, but I'll go over both classes, so just bear with me. Uh, we'll start off with CJUST 444, uh, White Collar Crime. Um, as you guys know, uh, white collar crime uh, is probably the number one crime on the planet right now. Uh, even going through this, uh, this terrible uh, crisis we have going on right now, there are people out there uh, trying to rip folks off, uh, either false claims to, to medicine, uh, stimulus uh, uh, check fraud, all sorts of things. Uh, so we need, we need folks out there who understand this and will be able to help combat it in the future. It's always changing. Um, it's always growing. And even the crooks, uh, like the street crooks, the, the, the gang members, uh, Aryan Brotherhood, the, the Serenos, the Mexican Mafia, uh, Chinese gangsters, there's, there's all sorts of gangsters. Uh, they're using white collar crime now. Um, this is just one way to make money. Uh, it could be difficult for us to catch these folks. Um, so anyhow, uh, white collar crime, if anybody's looking for uh, if anybody's looking for a job, this is probably a great area to look at. Uh, everybody has jobs for white collar crime folks, fraud folks, that's what they call us. Um, we're talking about stater brothers. Uh, they have a pretty intensive fraud unit. Target has an amazing fraud unit. Um, all the banks, all the credit card companies, uh, there's a lot of work out there. Uh, civilian fraud investigations, I believe, is kind of the way of the future. Um, pretty soon, dinosaurs like me, uh, guys wearing a badge and gun, I think we're going to go by way of the dodo. Uh, but we definitely need strong folks out there who understand uh, white collar crime. So that being said, that's my sales pitch. I uh, want to start off with, uh, well, first of all, let's start off with a book. Um, I sent you guys out an email last week on the book. Uh, I realize that books are expensive now. Uh, I really like this book. I don't get a kickback. We'll talk about kickbacks. A um, lot of different uh, books out there, but this one I liked. It was relatively inexpensive. Uh, but it is very important that we get the fourth edition of this book. This is Trusted Criminals. It's written by David Friedrichs. It will be in your syllabus. And uh, if you can see it there, that's what it looks like. You do not need the CD. You do not need a new book. Please avoid getting the third edition. The third edition is missing material that we'll be uh, covering in class. So... Uh, I'm expecting you guys to either already have this book or to get it rather quick. Uh, the e-books are great. I love them. Uh, uh, we'll talk about e uh, some of the, the things that are cool about e-books and e-discovery class, uh, kind of the OCR formatting, things like that. But just your ability to be able to get to a topic right away uh, through a, a simple uh, search. So, uh, and they're cheaper, I believe. But anyhow, let's make sure we get this book right away because we will be using this. Uh, we will be doing projects. 
and I want you guys to, to be able to keep up with reading. Um, let's go over the course syllabus first of all. If you guys want to uh, open up your course syllabus, it should be attached to your email. Um, as you can see, you have my office phone there on the top. Uh, again, I'm Detective Brian Money. You could call me Detective. You could call me Professor. Uh, Title-wise, I'm an Associate Professor, but it's exciting when you guys call me Professor. Uh, whatever, whatever flips your boat. Do not call me Brian, and do not call me Money. Uh, the only people who could call me Money are my coworkers here, who uh, we've we've been uh, we've done some pretty crazy things in the past uh, 28 or so years. I've been a cop. Uh, so if you do call my office phone, it will go to my personal phone. I have that with me at all times. Uh, also email. If you email me, that'll go to my phone right away. Okay. Uh, we, we, you have the class hours, uh, class hours are, uh, um, I believe Tuesday. I, I'm going to have to check, <laughs> but I know it's six to nine 50. I believe, uh, typically, uh, see just 44, 44. Uh, they put uh, Tuesdays and uh, see just 466 we do on Thursdays. But anyhow, uh, regarding 444, of course, it's an upper division course. Uh, it's going to focus on the study and examination of white collar crime. I focus mainly on the state of California because that's where we're at, even though we will talk about some federal sections. Uh, what are our objectives? Uh, we want to uh, introduce you, of course, to white collar crime. Things like fraud and embezzlement, money laundering. Uh, one of the constant issues I see with my white collar crime students um, is the difference between something like robbery and embezzlement. Uh, robbery is a forceful act. It's done by force or fear. It's, uh, it's something where I stick a gun in someone's face. I say, yo, give me all your money. Um, that's robbery. Embezzlement is different. There's a subtlety that we'll talk about in embezzlement. Um, kind of a thing of trust or, or a fiduciary is, is what we'll discuss. Uh, we're going to learn the different characteristics of white-collar crime suspects. We just talked about that. Your white-collar crime suspect will typically commit their crime by trust. Uh, we're going to talk about them being the best employees in your company, uh, not the worst. We always look at the worst. We look at the troublemakers. We look at the, the guys that are always, you know, complaining and, and all of that. Well, with white collar crime, it's exactly the opposite. Our crooks are your number one employee. That's who you should be looking at. Okay. And then lastly, we're going to uh, introduce some auditing techniques that will help expose various types of theft and fraud. Okay, we've already talked about the book. The book again, Trusted Criminals by uh, David Friedrich. Okay, and I have that in, uh, in the syllabus if you need to, to Google that. Get it on Amazon or whatever. Grading. I'm real simple, guys. Meat and potatoes here. Okay. Uh, grading. Essays are going to be 15% of your grade. I used to keep them at 10%, but I found students just would not do the essay, which is amazing to me. Uh, they, they basically would say, well, B is good enough. Well, a few students have learned that that wasn't a good decision uh, because, you know, if they end up getting a B, with their overall grade, despite the essay, now they end up with a C or sometimes even a D. You don't want that. Don't be that guy. Uh, quizzes, 10%. Uh, we're pretty much taking a quiz or some form of it every class. With the online course, we're probably going to be doing uh, a lot of uh, question response type quizzes. It's going to be based off lecture or reading. Okay. Uh, so that'll be 10% of your grade. You want to keep up on that. Uh, the big one, case studies and projects. Almost every single class, we're going to have either a case study or a project. They will not be super intensive. Don't worry. Uh, I want concepts, uh, but I want some good responses, and I want some well-written responses. If, you, uh, if I ask you to um, give me you know, an explanation over a topic, and you give me five words, uh, you're probably not going to do well, okay? I want you guys to put some thought into this, and we'll, we'll discuss those projects as they come up. Uh, tests are going to be 20% of your grade, okay? So the tests are going to typically be connected to your quizzes. So questions that you've dealt with 
at the with the quizzes, um, your your tests are going to be very similar. The final is still cumulative, so everything builds on each other. Okay, attendance. I don't know that we'll be able to really take attendance per se in an online class. However, uh, I will require responses from every student. If you don't respond within the allotted time, uh, that will be considered a, an absence, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys plenty of time to respond to these. Okay, uh, A, 90 and above. Uh, B, 80 to 89. Uh, I'll, I'll basically if you end up with like an 89.7 of course I'm going to give you the A okay uh, C's 70% in a, uh, to a 79 D 60 to 69 and of course F is uh, 59 and under um, goes on to essays and by the way this is going to be similar for both classes uh, the essays uh, you have to write it in MLA guys do not write this thing in some weird makeshift uh, format. Uh, some guys like uh, some of the different uh, APA models and stuff. I would ask you not to only because it's more difficult. And uh, the material that we're covering isn't really conducive to APA format. The essays I'm going to be assigning, uh, no, no reason for you to do that. We, we aren't getting into the criminology concepts, the science part. Okay? But you need to see how to write a, a paper in MLA, okay? And you can't just make it up. So there's plenty of sites out there that'll help you do that, okay? If I say minimum 1,500 words, that means 1,500 words or more. Uh, if you write a 1,500 word paper, that's minimum. So you'll probably get a minimum grade. Uh, it'll be passing, probably, if you, if you follow all the other uh, prompts. However, if I assign you a 1,500 word paper and you give me 1,000 words, there's just nothing I can do with that, folks. So help me out, okay? Um, let's uh, remember, your work product is going to be how folks judge you in work life. So make sure you do a good job. Okay, we already talked about quizzes, the case studies, test, and final. It's on page two. Attendance, we've talked about that. If for some reason you miss, you just don't show up, you don't, meaning online, I'm sorry, but you don't uh, turn in or respond to, to my uh, questions or, or the projects, and you get marked absence, after four, I, I, I have to drop you or, or give you an F, um, unless you just have an amazing excuse for that. Uh, it's, it's one of those things, guys. We need contact hours here. So um, I think... That'll uh, just about cover it for C just 44 as far as the, the syllabus goes. I don't grade on a curve, by the way. So uh, if you just listen and you pay attention and you put a little bit of effort into this class, you'll do fine. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. You're going to see some things and learn some things maybe you didn't know about. Okay? Uh, let me go over the grade report. Because I am old school. I don't use whiteboard, blackboard, green board, blue board. I use Brian board. And Brian board is just a piece of paper that has a grade sheet. <laughs> and what I want you guys to do is print this out. And as you get a grade, you're going to mark down what you got on that assignment, whether it's a quiz. If you, uh, for the projects, uh, every project is going to be worth one point, and remember, we're going to we're going to have a project almost every single class, including today. So you'll uh, identify that uh, I gave you full points for that, and uh, you'll be able to keep up with your grade, uh, kind of at the same time I'm uh, working through your grade. Okay. So when you guys print out your stuff, make sure you print out your course syllabus and your grade report, very important, okay? And don't forget the book, See Just 444. Okay, let's talk real quick about See Just 466. This is e-discovery. This is a basic course, guys. Uh, I am not gonna teach you how to hack into computers, okay? That isn't something you need to know right now. But I am gonna teach you some stuff that's uh, uh, pretty conducive to hacking, okay? Uh, I'm going to teach you that, that there are materials you could buy online right now on Amazon. Everything you need to conduct 
uh, check fraud, credit card fraud, everything you need is right there at Amazon. It's amazing. So we'll talk about stuff like that. Uh, we're going to talk about the language, uh, the language of fraud or e-discovery, uh, especially when you're when you're dealing with like uh, e-forensics, e what they call electronic forensics. We all know if uh, someone, a uh, bad guy shoots a good guy, blood's going to go all over the place. So they, they go out and they get those blood splatter analysis and evidence techs, and they come out and they measure and do all that kind of stuff and the sticky wiggy valve and the flimmer flammer tube, and they, they figure out what happened, okay? E-discovery is a little bit different. Uh, think of it as a forensic science, and there's a language that goes on with that, and you don't want to sound like a big dummy uh, when you're talking about um, e-discovery. Uh, things like data, metadata, and all of these things. You know, I don't want to do anything to change the metadata on a computer that I've seized, for example. If I do that, my evidence goes out the window per the Fourth Amendment. Okay, so we want to make sure that we understand the language. So we'll, we'll be talking a lot about language. Remember, this is a basic introductory course. Okay, uh, the book. It's, again, a book that uh, I thought was rather inexpensive, uh, but it was a good book. It was one that I liked, so I got E-Discovery, An Introduction to Digital Evidence. Uh, it was written by Amelia Phillips, Ronald Godfrey, Christopher Stewart, Christine Brown. Looks like this. You do not need the CD. You, you can get the old ratty old book. I don't care if it's highlighted in a million spots. That's not a big deal. Um, you could get the ebook. Again, they're a little cheaper, easier to get. Okay, uh, but we need to have this book again. Uh, See just 466. I sent you out emails on this. Uh, hope you guys have uh, either uh, acquired this book or are in the process of. Okay, um, we'll go over the course syllabus for See just 466. Okay, uh, generally this class is on Thursdays from six to nine fifty. This is an upper division course that focuses on the study, examination, investigation of techniques utilizing the processing of digital evidence. Uh, you're going to learn basic storage methods and how to execute the safe extraction of digital evidence. There's a certain way we acquire digital evidence from digital uh, uh, modes. Um, things like computers, PDAs. We're going to talk about different types of storage devices. Uh, a lot of things that you may not even know can store information. Okay. Um, let's see. Course objectives. Of course, we're going to learn about the meaning of digital evidence. We're going to learn how computer hacking and computer intrusion are also used to commit uh, different sorts of crimes or identity theft. Okay. Uh, we're going to basically introduce you to the legal and safe process of digital evidence extraction or acquisition. Okay, because just like everything else, the Fourth Amendment uh, rules all. Okay, it's the Bill of Rights, our Constitution. Okay, uh, we talked about the book. Uh, as with uh, 444, same thing. Your essay, 15%, 15% of your grade. Uh, we will have one essay for the course. Uh, quizzes. What the heck did I do here? Okay, quizzes. Uh, we'll go with, we're going to go with 10%. Uh, uh, case studies and projects, 25%. Uh, not, uh, yes, and then test, 20%. The final, 20%. And again, attendance, 10%. Okay. Same grading criteria as with uh, 444, so I don't want to bore you guys with all of that again, okay? The biggest thing here is making sure you guys keep on top of your, uh, your um, lectures, uh, keep on top of the projects. What I don't want to have happen is uh, I'll, I'll generally give you a lot of time to complete a project, uh, probably the entire week, obviously. But if I say, okay, it's due at 6 p.m. on Thursday, don't send it to me at 6.15 on Thursday. Don't send it to me at 6.30 on Thursday. I'm going to start marking off on that. Uh, at some point, I may not give you a grade altogether. Okay? I'll give you guys plenty of time to turn these things in. Uh, what I want is when you do send me something, 
uh, any sort of uh, paper, grade, quiz, uh, I'm going to uh, give you a response, basically a confirmation response. And uh, if you don't receive that confirmation response, it's going to be your responsibility to get a hold of me and let me know, hey, detective money, I haven't received a response yet. Okay. Um, what I don't want to have happen is have you guys come back and say, oh, yeah, I sent it to you. What happened? Okay. Uh, I was in college. I was in college a lot. <laughs> I know the games. Okay. So let's try to keep everything uh, on the straight and narrow. Again, I know this is going to be a little bit difficult for... For everyone, including me, uh, but I think we could get through it. Um, most important is for you guys to stay safe, uh, to, to really, really, really focus on your uh, um, school in a safe environment. Uh, there's no reason why you guys can't collaborate. I'm, I'm all for that. Uh, this this uh, course, all my courses, are all about collaboration. Um, the final and the the test and all of that i mean i hate to say it unless i see someone just full-on copying another person then we'll have issue uh do not plagiarize okay i'm really big on that uh you know it, there's no reason to plagiarize it's really silly uh if if you're using um you know sources from another uh person then just give them credit say hey, yeah you know detective money said this or joe schmuckatelli said that just, just source it. If you source it, you're good. But if you try to say, oh, look what I did, and I find out that it was someone else's work, well, that's, it's, you know, borderline criminal almost. I mean, I hate to say it that way, but I want you guys to realize that, that that's how serious it is. Um, bear with me, guys. Shoot me emails. Give me a phone call. Uh, I will answer your questions. I am still working, as you guys would guess. Uh, um, we're we're kind of you know, uh, pedal to the metal over here, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, for those of you who've taken my domestic violence class, those darn things are up in the, the stratosphere right now. Everybody, you know, they're, they're cooped up together and, and tempers are flaring. So we're dealing a lot with that and all the way up to and including homicide. So, uh, uh, I'm still here at work. I'm still working. Uh, but I'm going to make sure I'm a hundred percent committed to you guys. Please get your work done. Please come to me sooner than later. If you guys have an issue or have some sort of emergency, let me know uh, before. Don't uh, wait until, you know, two weeks later and say, oh, yeah, by the way, this is what happened. This is why I didn't turn a paper in. Okay? Um, we will get through this, guys. And uh, uh, please um, just reach out to me if you need something, and uh, we'll work through it, okay? Uh, I'm going to send this uh, out to you guys, hopefully uh, by tomorrow. Well, tomorrow is kind of funny because you're watching this right now. So, <laughs> okay, let me, let me restate that. Uh, I am going to send this out to you March 31st on Tuesday uh, before our class starts. So uh, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the prompt uh, for both classes. If you guys... Uh, uh, it, it's going to be in the, the written email I sent to you. But the prompt's more or less going to be, tell me what you think, see just 444, tell me what you think white collar crime is. Don't Google it. Don't look in your book. Tell me. There's no right or wrong answer. I want to see what you guys think. I want a paragraph. Okay. Paragraph usually involves more than three sentences, unless you're uh, Austrian or something, and then their, their sentences go on for pages. Uh, what I want is probably about a half page uh, paragraph on what you think white collar crime is. See Just 466, same assignment, just with what do you think e-discovery is? What is electronic discovery? Don't Google it. Don't look it up. Just tell me what you guys think it is because we're going to try to adapt and grow um, and give you guys some knowledge on both of these subjects. Hopefully, uh, you'll have a better understanding by the end of the course. Okay? So that's it. I'm going to stop here, and uh, we're going to see how this works. Uh, feel free to critique me as you, as you uh, would like. If there's something you'd like to see more or less of, let me know. All right? Uh, this course, by the way, uh, goes, uh, it's going to be going from March 30th to about June 11th. It sounds like uh, in, in about June 11th, that's going to be our midterm time, or I'm sorry, final time. Um, so 
Uh, you guys let me know if you have any questions or concerns, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.